Hey, it's Gail Banks. I've just been to Pontiac, Michigan to GM Global Propulsion Systems, and they schooled me on the new 2020 Duramax L5P, and I've got a pair of them here to show you. GM has upgraded these things for 2020 so that the trucks can pull up to a 35,500 pound trailer. So what modifications and upgrades do they make the engines to pull this off? I'm gonna show you that right now. So let's take a walk around this one. This is an engine as shipped to the assembly line from the Duramax factory. The other one we've kind of field stripped a bit and I'll get to the parts in a minute, but what's really obvious as you start to walk around this, the whole front end is different. There used to be a single belt plane, now there's an additional belt plane and a, and a pulley added just to run the fan. One thing I, I want to point out, even though it's not new, the block heater on the LMLs was much smaller than on the L5P. This is a serious block heater for you cold weather guys. Uh, let's go around back here. Most all of this is the same. Uh, they have done a few subtle changes. This uh, coolant degassing pipe is new. The coolant recovery bottle might be in a new location in the truck, I believe it is. Uh, of course, they use a motor-driven, very quick reacting, very variable geometry control in the turbine. This gives you quicker response and it's better for emissions uh, calibrating too. We've taken off the uh, uh, cat converter that sits on the back of the turbocharger normally, just so you can see what's going on in the turbo itself. Now, as we come around here to this side, the big deal to me is, is the oil cooler, the engine oil cooler and, and the ducting into and out of the oil cooler. In the past for our development on our JLTV military uh, versions of the Duramax, the, what we call the Banks Max engines, we've built a number of prototype intercoolers with way more plates uh, for the oil to move through. But I've never liked the fluid dynamics in the housing, and I'll show you how they fixed it. It's beautiful to see. So I think we've pretty much covered what's readily apparent on the engine. Let's have a look at the parts. These 2020 L5Ps are pre-production. The plant will convert over to the 2020s in April. Uh, and I believe truck production should begin in May. At least that's the word. So what are we doing with these? We've got one in the dyno cell, which I'm going to try to kill. In fact, I'll get there. And that's a whole different story, but be watching for those videos. One thing I was curious about, a lot of guys are making these intake pipes to feed the turbocharger out of steel tubing, you know, muffler tubing. And I've been in that business all, all, all my life. Uh, it's nothing new. But one thing I, want, I wanted to talk about is this air inlet and the crankcase venting system, which feeds into this hose and into the air inlet. The second thing is, it's quite large here. It gets to be compressor inlet size here. And there's an air gap between this shape and this shape that allows the compressor recirc anti-surge system to work. If you remove this and just pay, take a piece of three and a half inch muffler tubing and put a flange on it and stick it on here, you defeat this whole system. The other part of this thing is this feed into this intake has to have the correct pressure in this line. The shape of how it goes into the airflow and its angle and even, a, even the shape inside here can't be easily duplicated with a piece of constant diameter tin pipe. So uh, why do I know about this? Because I've got 
a few thousand hours in developing a new crankcase system for this engine and dealing with this at higher power levels, you got to know what you're doing or you're going to be pushing oil into the intake on the turbocharger. So let's move to the water system. We know that they put another belt plane into the situation here and it, it's just these three pulleys. Essentially, all we're doing with this belt plane is driving the fan. So what's going on there? And what does that look like? Well, here's vibration damper off of the L5P 17 through 19. Single belt plane, six groove. What happens on the 2020 is they've added a bolt pattern to the front of it and added a belt to drive the fan. This is a lot more belt than drives everything else. If you look, and I hope you've got this on camera, uh, if you look at the width of this belt, you're picking up a bunch more ribs. The message here is the horsepower being used to drive this fan in my estimation, is probably more than the horsepower used to drive the dual alternators, your air conditioning compressor, and what have you. It's a serious fan. That doesn't mean you, you, you're pulling horsepower all the time. But when you get up into the thin, low-density air at high, high altitude, and you want to pull it constantly, you want to take advantage of that 10 speeds ability to pull full torque in the lower gears, you got to cool the engine. So the engine's power rating is 445 horsepower and 910 pound-feet. The issue here is being able to deliver that all the time. This is the game that all the OEMs play with the horsepower numbers off of an engine dyno versus the horsepower and torque you can actually put to the ground continuously in the truck. And as you go up in altitude, of course you do do that by going up slopes, and those of you guys who are pulling serious trailer loads know what I'm talking about. The temperature, the ability to cool the engine diminishes because the air density is so low going through the radiator to cool it that it can't absorb as much heat. There are ways around that, and what GM has done is a hell of a lot more radiator. And a 28-inch fan, I mean, it's a serious-looking fan. Uh, they've added two inches to the fan diameter, so it has a fan clutch so that when you don't need the fan, it's not pulling the horsepower. But when you do need the fan, it's there. Now you've got more cooling package. You've got more fan to pull low-density air through it when you want to make full power up in the mountains. This is pretty serious. If you, if you ask me. So once you've done that, that means you're running the engine longer at full power. Well, that's what we do uh, in the military engines. We have a 400 hour test we run called the NATO test where the engine's at 85% 85, 85 of the time, the engine's either at full power for two hours and then full torque for two hours, back to full 10 hour cycles of doing that. And you do it 40 times as opposed to, to these kids that do these stunts where they run the thing up for five or six seconds and then they're proud and amused that they blow the engine apart. None of that is what the hell we do at Banks. We make big power, but we also make it live. That's our history. What is GM doing to make big power and make it live? Well, we've really addressed the oil cooler. Now the this is your L5P oil cooler setup right here, up through 19. It's got a heat exchanger, much more serious than previous uh, Duramax heat exchangers. The thing I've not liked about this all along, and plates have been added through the years, is that the fluid as it runs through enters and leaves at the bottom of the stack. In other words, this stack goes into here. Well, the fluid dynamics through the upper part of the stack, it kind of sucks. What the guys at 
global propulsion systems have done, the, the DMAX design group, these are some sharp cookies, by the way, they've add th added additional plates, so we've got 36% more oil cooling surface area. The fins in these are a new design as well, so 36% more plate area and an improved fin, and they've done an angle on the top of this thing so that you've got a situation where the fluid enters low and leaves high. So it's doing this much better to enable that, the outlet casting that goes from the cooler to the block is much taller to facilitate this high-rise outlet. So 36% more area and improved fluid dynamics. This thing might be capable of 45% more oil heat rejection. That's a big deal if you're staying on the loud pedal for a long period of time. We also looked at the water pumps to see if they increase the impeller uh, in any way, di diametrically or uh, impeller height. And early L5P, 2020 L5P, it's virtually the same. In fact, it's exactly the same. Let's talk about how the, how the belt drive runs the fan. On the early style, to get the right fan rotation, they drove the fan off the back of the, of the belt. That's why this shiv, which is the belt shiv, is flat. On the new one, this gets pretty serious. First of all, this belt, of course, has its own spring-loaded spring idler, but we're not driving off the back side any longer. We're driving off the rib side. This gives you a much better couple. And I kind of like the sexy little vents in the pulley, too. <laughs> Just a, I'm a, I'm a design nut. Real heavy-duty bearing system. The front covers are completely new on these engines, as, a, as opposed to the earlier L5P, so let's just get ready to rumble. We've got a hell of a starting point with all this additional capability for what I want to do with these engines. And basically what I want to do is find their limit, and oh, by the way, you've got more oil cooler, you also have bigger piston cooling nozzles. So I think, I think we're going to have to push real hard to find the limits of the pistons, the block, the crankshaft, the rods, but we're going to not starve it for oil. We're going to keep the oil cool. We are going to rev it a little high. Uh, we're not going to starve it for jacket cooling. If I have to add a second water pump, pump belt driven, I'm going to do it. If I have to add a second oil pump belt driven, I'm going to do that. That's all going to be in the dyno series that's upcoming. So stay tuned. We're going to have a lot of fun with Duramaxes this year. I suggest you subscribe.